light brighter than sun and moon, all shining, all heavenly lights, giving my virtues to all, not forsaking anyone. I will proclaim the Dharma like the roar of a great lion, bowing before all Buddhas, steadfastly gaining virtues, with wisdom fulfilling my vows, I shall be a guide to all, like the wisdom of my teacher, May my wisdom also shine all throughout the universe and in me one and all. If I shall fulfill these vows, may all lands tremble with joy. From the heavens one trust flowers rain down upon all the lands. No. Aloha Kako, Aloha, welcome to Puna Honganji Buddhist Temple Sunday service, Lady Eshinni and Lady Kakushinni Day. Thank you so much. So as you see in the picture of the three people, also today we had an occasion to watch the video about Lady Eshinni and Lady Kakushinni. Just uh, let me share again. Yeah? So the center, the person in the center is, middle is Master Shinran Shoni, the founder of Jodo Shin Buddhism. And then she is Lady Eshinni's wife. And then she's a Lady Kakushinni's daughter. So as a spouse, Shinna Shonin, the Lady Eshinni, also parents of the Lady Kakushinni as a daughter. So this is a beautiful occasion for each of us here to learn the legacy, history, and the life of Lady Eshinni and the Lady Kakushinni. And then they are truly the important people in our, not only our Shin Buddhism teaching, but truly be a leaders or guiding people. Even in this society too, we can learn a lot from them. So today is again occasion by learning and then realizing their life from the past 
we get to aspire for the future so that the future generation also can learn from our past. So today, this present is an excellent time. This past and the future are melting into this present moment where I am here, you are here. So together, including myself, today we listen to with Lady Eshin and then Lady Kakshin and then with Shinna Shuni. We listen to the, this teaching soap Namo Amitabha so together so that we may also encounter, find true and then real, which we can rely on perfectly in our life, whatever we may be going through. So today I call this Shinna Shoni and then Lady Eshinni. They are yeah, spouse and then couple. Yeah? But uh, they are not just a regular, having a regular relationships. Not only wife and then husband. The, it is said that Lady Eshinni ever regarded him as just an ordinary person, but as a manifestation of Bodhisattva Avalokite Shivala of compassion, which guides her. So Lady Eshinni, she doesn't just support or praising or revering him as a spousal husband or as a father because he is the manifestation, expression of Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara. Yeah, Bodhisattva is a being or existence in the Buddhism teaching, the one who aspire for enlightenment for themselves and for others, so helping themselves for attainment of enlightenment. Also, not only thinking of themselves, helping others to attain their own enlightenment. This is a concept or meaning or existence of in Buddhism teaching that is a bodhisattva. So Lady Eshinni thinking, this Shinnan Shoni, my spouse, is not just a spouse or husband. He is truly born to this life and marry me. He met me as a bodhisattva who guiding my life out of compassion, so that this myself also attain true peace and then happiness, encounter, realize, true and then real. He was born to guide me as Bodhisattva Avarkiteshvara. Therefore, Lady Eshini revered, respect Shinran Shoni out of heart, bottom of her heart. Yeah? So we can see a kind of different relationships here. Yeah? They are not just a human being. They truly seeing something higher than themselves in each other. Something profound. Something deep. Therefore, they cannot help praising, revering each other. Then one question I want to ask you is, have you ever bowed to someone? Have you ever bowed to someone? Yeah, bowing, bending your body? Yeah, this can be the culture by bowing. We show our uh, greetings or show thank you, show respect or show even, even apology. Yeah, bowing. So we, we may say we did before, but have you ever bowed to your parents? Have you ever bowed to your spouse? Have you ever bowed to your brother, sister? Or did you bow to your child? Did you bow to your grandchildren? That when you bow, not just like a greeting, you bow to them out of your respect, out of your gratitude, out of your uh, gratefulness. You cannot help but bowing. The kind of bow, did you do? The answer can be no. Yeah? We may bow again like a greeting, like a, not like a out of deep, profound respect. Yeah? Maybe uh, if, you think, if we think to ourselves, we may bow to somebody when we really feel, ah, oh, this person saved my life. Without this person, I cannot exist. If we receive such a profound 
that in our life we may bow. But again, still it's not like uh, coming out from our bottom of heart. Yeah? Then this bow, if we bow to somebody out of our respect, the person or something is a truly something special. Yeah? This something truly touched my heart, my life. I cannot help but bow in my head. Yeah. Then, yeah, as I became a minister, I had uh, some uh, occasions to officiate at the wedding ceremony. So I have a meeting with a newly a couple and then uh, talk story and explain the wedding service order. And then every time when I had a wedding ceremony, I share one story or one uh, sentence that is this. Not only looking at each other, but also looking up together. Yeah? Not only looking at each other, but also looking up together. Yeah? So of course we can imagine yeah, even when they're looking at each other, I can see that truly they love each other, they're cherishing. So I can see each moment they really enjoy and then they feel affection, compassion for each other. Yeah? So again, it's so important yeah, to look at each other. Yeah? But also, I tell people, but also not only looking at each other, but also it is important to have something they can look up together. Yeah? Not only facing to each other, but to have something they can look up together. The meaning is, yeah, you know, when they're, when they're in the honeymoon, yeah, honeymoon period, they are so happy. Yeah? When they see, look at each other, they will find only happiness or joy and only something good there. Even they may see something short shortcomings still they can love yeah no argument no conflict yeah but we can imagine yeah as time passing they will begin to see not only good things yeah they begin to see something they don't like and then they begin to see something they don't realize when they got to marry but as the time passing they began to feel, oh, I didn't realize you are doing, or they begin to have a conflict or argument. How many times did I have to tell you, don't do that? Or they may having a habit, and then, oh, I didn't realize, but you change a lot there. When we got to marry, you are so beautiful, handsome, or skinny, but you change a lot. Huh. I don't know why I got married to this person. Yeah. So even to myself and I, me and then my wife, I think of when we look at each other, I guess we only see something so happy and then so joyful. Yeah? Of course, we see something, uh, shortcomings or something, weakness, but still the love is more, so we don't care about shortcomings. But again, as the time passing, we may all begin to see something, shortcomings. And then if we only see, look at each other, what we'll do is pointing finger to each other and then complain, conflict and arguments here. Yeah? So love will change. Now this is a reason yeah, when people get to marry, they, they say they promise, I promise I love you forever. I promise I respect you. I promise I cherish. But what will happen is, as we know, love will change as they having their life together, they're going through so many things. Some may choose yeah, the divorce, or some may become more having uh, difficult relationships, or maybe violence or abusing. Yeah? It's showing we human beings changing, or we human has a tendency yeah, only begin to see things only in a way I can, I want. Therefore, again, it's important not only look at each other, because if we see only each other, we'll end up only complain to each other. 
But therefore, we need something they can look up together. That means uh, religion. To myself, that is uh, Buddhism. Something higher than ourselves. Something true and real, which provide beyond our human way of thinking. Again, because yeah, no matter how nice words or inspirational words we may say, we may hear, we may read, that belongs to human world. Yeah, humans' words has uh, limitations. Yeah, unfortunately, no matter how it sounds so good words, nice uh, story or picture, that has a mind of distinction. Mind of judgment or mind of discrimination. So therefore, we need the, this religion or something higher than ourselves who provide us the true and then real. And then by having something we can look up together, they can learn truth about life, truth of themselves. And then by learning and then listening, something truth yeah then when they come to look at each other again now they can see differently now we can see not only in a way i want i can but now through this something truth providing different perspective and then can realize indeed i can see in this way but now i can see also differently have a reflection and then we can have a better relationships because now we can see not only looking looking at each other but now through looking up something guided by this something true and then real guiding our life so therefore this is a reason why i tell uh, every time when i had an occasion to officiate at the wedding ceremony to share these words try to have not only at the looking at each other, but have something they can look up together as their guidance. Then, for this guidance, now I bow. I can bow to this. And then what this is. Yeah? This is not a human being or human being words. This is the I bow to yeah? Namo Amitabhats. I bow to Namo Amitabha out of respect, out of gratefulness. Although I bow, it's not me. It truly comes out from my life. I cannot help but bowing. Why? Because this Namo Amitabha is not only the word or just a sentence I use. This is a Amida Buddha's boundless compassion and transcendent wisdom. Amida Buddha's boundless compassion truly beyond our human love, loving everybody, every single person, without distinction, without discrimination, totally observe each person's life, difficulty and struggles, calling whatever happens in your life. I shall be with you. I shall embrace you. This love never will be betray you, forever with you. And when I touched by this such a compassion, finally I can feel whatever I'm going through, I'm okay. In this embrace, finally I can find comfort. I can live with this compassion and then I can die with this compassion. And then this Amida Buddha's transcendent wisdom here yeah, teaching me to see things. Not only in a way I want to, I can, but this Buddha's wisdom truly see things as it is, without mind of distinction, without uh, convenience or discrimination, truly reveal the truth to me. Therefore, when I encounter this wisdom, this wisdom teach me how I see things how I see people and what I often find is, yeah, find is, indeed, I do have a mind of judgment. I only see people and they switch only in a way I want. And that causing yeah, trouble to each other. Oh, I don't like you because this, this. I like this because this, this. 
I say like, don't, don't like, based on my convenience and the situation. This is a, my mind, yeah? So, this, in this way, when I encounter this transcendent wisdom, truly guiding my life, I try to live my life, not driven by my ego or desire, attachment, but guided by this transcendent wisdom, by this truth. It's not easy life, but truly I am guided by that direction with the wisdom, that path of Nimbutz. So therefore, when I encounter this Namo Amitabha, finally I found shelter, guidance, reliance. I can rely on finally. Before, I tried to live my life by myself with my experience, education, thinking. I'm doing well. But when I encounter this Namo Amitabha, I can say to myself how selfish I was and then I am and then will be. How ignorant I was. I am and then will be. And then that guides my life. Oh, I cannot be who I was. I cannot be who I'm used to be because now I am touched by this compassion and wisdom. I taste the something true and then real. I can see how different it is. Now this juicy taste of Namo Amitabha, Namo Amitabha expression of enlightenment touched my life. Therefore, it begins to inspire. It begins to me make me aspire. I want to be like a Buddha, knowing my limitations, but now this limitation has no limit in this Buddha's compassion and wisdom. So therefore, to myself, because this Namo Amitabha truly saved my life, guides my life, be part of my life, my shelter, my guidance, my everything. Therefore, I cannot help but bowing. I cannot help but putting my hand together because now I encounter this something special which saving my life, guiding my life. In this embrace, I can live with this compassion and wisdom. Therefore, I bow my head, putting my hand together, and I say, Namo Amitabha, Namo Amitabha. Don't you think this is a wonderful joy I receive, and then you are also receiving every day, every moment. And this Vow Namo Amitabha, I also often say in this way. Don't worry, be happy. I shall embrace you as you are. Don't worry, be happy. I shall embrace you as you are. Yeah, indeed, life is difficult. Also, life is joy. Yeah, life truly, we are going through so much. Yeah, indeed, we will worry about. But don't worry, be happy. I shall embrace you as you are. Whatever you may go through, Satoshi, you are no more alone. Indeed, you are alone, but in my embrace, you are never alone. Let's walk together. Let's start again. Let's live it together. In my, this Buddha's embrace, you are never alone. So therefore, a Buddha finds me, and I found me in Namo Amitabha. Indeed. I'm in this Buddha's embrace. Finally, I encounter true and then real. In this embrace, I bow my head, touched by this compassion and wisdom. Therefore, including myself, let us continue to listen. Listen to the teachings of Buddhism. And let us encounter something true and then real, which guiding our life. Let us, touched by this compassion and kindness, and then continue to live our life, reciting Namo Amitabha, the Buddha's calling voice. Don't worry, be happy. I shall embrace you as you are. Such a joy we are receiving every day and every moment. Namo Amitabha, Namo Amitabha, Namo Amitabha. Oh,
Shinshu Pledge 1 I take my refuge in the vow of the Buddha, reciting the name, I shall live through life with strength and serenity. I revere the light of the Buddha. I'll put my effort in my work with self-reflection and gratitude. I follow the teachings of the Buddha, discerning the right path. I'll spread the true Dharma. I rejoice in the compassion of the Buddha. I respect and help others and then do my best for the welfare of humankind. Give. 
Oh, 